Good morning, I'm Mabel Jong and you're watching continuing coverage of the World Healthcare Congress and we're at day one of the event here. And I'm so pleased to have with me in the interview zone, Director Wayne Turnage, who is Director, District of Columbia, Department of Healthcare Finance. Good morning, Director, how are you? I'm fine, good morning, how are you? Well, you've been at your job for the last four years. Mm -hmm. A lot of change has been going on in your department. Can you describe to me what the, the view has been like uh, from where you sit at the department? Uh, well, there has been a lot of change, uh, especially uh, with respect to the uh, emphasis of uh, uh, health care reform. When I came to the district, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, district was already one of the leaders in expanding coverage. Uh, so what we have tried to do is to make sure that uh, there has been no uh, uh, retreat in the uh, coverage of people who need uh, uh, health care and don't have the resources to pay for them. And in the meantime, find ways to uh, uh, make sure that uh, when more people gain access to the system, uh, that we are ensuring that they are, are using the system in a way that is uh, cost effective and the system is producing outcomes that uh, reflect an improvement in their health care. And how have you kept the funding up with de the demand? Well, there, uh, actually we have a, a, a very uh, 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 we have a strong federal partner, and that being the uh, uh, United States government. They pay 70% yeah. of the cost of our program on the Medicaid side. And the district was in one of those situations where that was rather unique. Uh, we we're probably the only uh, uh, jurisdiction in the country that fully funds a local uh, insurance, health insurance program for people who were not eligible for Medicaid. So what uh, happened uh, in, in, in D.C. started in 2010, uh, the district made an effort to try to uh, raise the eligibility levels for Medicaid to move some people who were in the fully funded local program to the Medicaid program still expand coverage and save money at the same time. So they did it in two steps. At first they took med, uh, Medicaid eligibility up to 133% of the uh, federal poverty level, which is uh, where the uh, emphasis is in healthcare reform. Mm -hmm. That allowed folks who were on the exchange program with incomes up to that level to move from a locally funded program to a federally funded program, oh. or at least partially federally funded. Then the next step was they took the uh, Medicaid program, they, fi they filed for a waiver and they, uh, uh, CMS approved a waiver that allowed the district to take eligibility up to 200% of the federal poverty level for childless adults. So anybody that was in the Alliance program uh, who had incomes that were less than 200% of, of the poverty level and, and, and were childless, they could then move into the Medicaid program. So again, that freed up local dollars and, and got the federal government involved in subsidizing 70% of the cost of the, uh, uh, the, medic the expansion. Okay, you mentioned earlier in the conversation that you really wanted to make sure that there was no pause in enrollment. Right. Um, have you noticed that actually an uptick uh, in the last five years? Yeah, if you look at the data uh, after, the, after expansion, if you look at the data prior to expansion, you see a probably an average growth rate in the Medicaid program, probably of about uh, three or 4% annually. After expansion, in the first two or three years after expansion, that growth rate uh, hit almost 15%. So there was a tremendous uptick. A lot of it was the, from the shift of people who were in the local insurance program to the Medicaid program. So there was not new coverage, but then there were some people who were childless adults, not in the Alliance program, who signed up for the Medicaid program. So okay. we have seen some growth, yes. Okay, and what have the reviews been like by your customers? Well, you know, it's a, you know one of the uh, challenges in, in healthcare even when you expand access, is to make sure that people are using the system appropriately. The district had a long-standing problem in its public uh, safety net system of a, uh, a, a, a system that was not uh, performing very well. They, in fact, they, um, uh, one of the reasons that they created the locally funded insurance program is because they shut down the inpatient uh, emergency, in, the inpatient facility and the emergency room in the public safety hospital because the costs were too high and the outcomes were poor. So the focus has been trying to uh, 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 learn from those lessons and build a, uh, a integrated uh, a community healthcare network that more positively uh, uh, produces outcomes that uh, reflect uh, a change in a beneficiary's health status. Okay, you'll be addressing a panel shortly. Yes. What is the key takeaway you want people attending this conference to have? Well, you know, I, I know there's a there's a tremendous debate uh, nationwide about whether or not uh, states should expand their Medicaid program. And what I would like to uh, convey is that we have expanded. We've gone beyond the requirement to expand, and it has been lar it has been very beneficial. So I, I'm, I've really not understood the uh, opposition to expansion. People need health care, and they're going to get it whether they get it uh, in an organized way or a disorganized way. So if the 
you have the opportunity to expand and build a, 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 a healthcare system around expansion, then you should do so. And that's the takeaway that I would like to see. That's a dynamic point. Yeah. Thank you so much, Director Turnage. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I'm Mabel Jong. Thanks for watching today.